the beginning of time, we have been visited by beings. We have referred to as angels, fairies, spirits, demons. We have seen strange lights and crafts in our skies. Creature sightings such as Bigfoot, the Mothman, the Jersey Devil, and others continue to be reported year after year. What is it we're seeing out there? Is this phenomenon all connected? More importantly, is it a threat? We all need a safe space in which to share our experiences, discuss the implications of the phenomena, and come together as a community of Fortians. That place is the bunker. Come and join us. And welcome back to The Bunker, episode 8. Today is a today is an interesting episode we're recording. This was spawned. The original idea was uh, was something completely different than the end product, which is interesting, and it's oftentimes happens with uh, with things in the paranormal. So, this is uh, pretty cool. We uh, Beth and I decided to take a trip to Alair State Park which is located uh, in central New Jersey. The, the impetus for this episode was, uh, was, an, uh, was a show that I was watching featuring a Kim Russo, who did, used to do this show called, I think she, maybe she still does, I don't know, called uh, The Haunting Of, and she would have a different guest on the show each week and bring them to some location where they had a sometimes traumatic or just a significant paranormal event. And bring them there and talk them through that. End up giving giving them a reading and stuff like that. So I saw this episode of that show recently where she took this actor, Eric Mabius, to Allier State Park. What's interesting about that is I grew up going to that place as a kid. I was, you know, my older sister brought me there quite a bit. What's interesting is that when I looked into the timeline when this when this gentleman was there as a child, it's like the same time frame when I was going there as a child, around the same age too, which is pretty cool. So, uh, Beth was had not seen the episode and also had never heard of Al Air State Park. So, I thought it would be kind of cool as a little experiment, Beth being a medium, to just visit Al Air State Park. Her having no foreknowledge of the place, no knowledge of the history of it never like i said had never even heard of it and i was curious if we went there if she could pick up on some of the same things that ken picked up on there when she went there with eric mabius back in 2012 so yeah so that's what this episode is about and it sort of takes a turn went in a direction i wasn't expecting which is pretty cool so you have any uh have any initial thoughts on the on the trip out there um no not really i was just we were going for a ride and ended up there and and that's about it. Yeah. So, I mean, you going in, you didn't have any preconceived notions of it. You didn't know about, I mean, like you, you mentioned to me, you'd never even heard of the place. You didn't know it existed. No, no, never been there. Never heard of it. Yeah. So, so we decided to just like, you know, make a day trip out of it and, uh, just went there for a few hours. And, uh, so I have some, some clips that I recorded, on that day that we're going to actually play as we go along here. And, uh, and then we're just going to like, listen to the clips and then we'll just kind of discuss afterwards. So that this first clip, uh, I recorded as we were just arriving, we just parked the car and just entered the village, just adjacent to the, to the, um, row houses. If anyone is, you know, any of the listeners have been there, you'll be familiar with, the. Uh, the row houses that are, you know, right at the beginning of the village, just, just by the parking lot. So where is this? You said where the name of it, but you didn't say where it was. Yeah, it's Al Air State Park, and it's in, I believe the town is Farmingdale, yeah, located in Wall Township. Farmingdale. 
Yeah, I was right. Farmingdale. Yeah, so the first clip is when we just basically first arrived and we're just walking along the row houses, just just beginning to enter the village. So uh, we'll play this clip and then, uh, and then we'll discuss. Well, when we first hit start walking, there's a black lady. She's carrying a bat. She's carrying a basket like this. Yeah. There's an MIL name, Mildred. There's an MIL name. Millie, Mildred. Mildred was a pretty common name. This is amazing. You can walk around for hours. So. Oh, yeah, you can walk around here all day. No problem. That's weird. Mill. Remember I was saying that? Oh, uh, yeah, that's weird. Mill Pond. Remember when I said there was a mill named Mill something? Mildred? <laughs> Millie? Mill? That's, that's mill. Why. I'm gonna... There's something went on here then. If this... If we get lots of activity and stuff, yeah. I'll review this. Okay. I'll make an episode out of this for the bunker. If, oh, okay, again, that's why I'm gonna try to... If you start getting stuff, I'm gonna stick this in your face. But isn't that... Like, I don't... I've never been here. That's Mill Pond. Didn't I just say there's a mill name? Mill Pond? Mildred? Yeah, mill that's Pond? interesting. So... And we turn around and there's the sign. Yeah. It's right around this corner. You didn't see that before. I mean, no, I don't. I've never been here in my life. Mill Run. So there's a mill name. That is crazy. Yeah. So right at that point, we yeah, you picked up on Mill mm. something Mill, yeah. which we'll get to this later in the show as well because I I I think that you, your original thought was oh you're you're getting this mill names a Mildred because you were seeing this image of this woman with a basket. Mm. And getting this mill name, you know, you kind of assumed that this the name you're getting applied to this woman that you were seeing at that mm. at that moment. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it, we'll get into it, and as as we get deeper in the show, it may come out that maybe maybe that wasn't what you were picking up on, and you you address this later on as well, um, because our original motivation for this episode mm-hmm. sort of took a turn and went in a different direction that neither one of us was expecting. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it, we'll get into it later, but it's interesting how this is a sort of like a, this episode and the thought behind it and the journey of it is almost like a miniature sort of foray into the paranormal because you're like, you go, you go into something with certain expectations or maybe no expectations. And then you start, getting deep in the weeds you start getting into it and then other things come out and you you start picking up on things that you you think have to do with this certain thing or or in reference to this person or that event and then mm-hmm. it turns out you, know, you look into it and then it takes you in another direction and you find out oh no it has it's taken- still part of the history of the land what happened right right exactly mm-hmm. because you know this is a historic village this is the 17 1800s so people will tend to assume that if you're picking up on something or if you have equipment activations or something, it has to do with historic people that are from that time period, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. It's a safe assumption because that's mm-hmm. why you're there. That's the whole motivation. That's the history behind it. You know, it's now a state park. People just go to visit. Mm-hmm. But you never know what you're going to get into. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like when you when you start getting uh, when you start getting impressions and. Uh, different things, voices, EVPs, and stuff like that. You never know where those things are actually going to yeah. take you. So it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so then you pick up on this mill. You're mm-hmm. thinking mill, mill, Mildred, because you yeah, have this picture. I think it's a name, but it's the name of the lake or the... Yeah, and then, mm-hmm. and then just a few seconds later, we walk further up the road, and then we turn around, and there's a sign that says, like, Mill Pond. Mm-hmm. And it's something I thought about later is that there was no... There was no evidence in that. It was just a little mucky pond. It wasn't like there was like a mill there or anything. Like it wouldn't have triggered in your head like, oh, there's a mill pond. Mm -hmm. Because there was nothing. It was just a little pond. There wasn't anything. There wasn't a windmill. There was no like water wheel. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, you know, there was no buildings around the pond at all, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, you know, so you picked up on that one thing and then we, you know, we just continued working, walking, Mm -hmm. you know, further down into the village and um, yeah, and then you picked up on 
you began picking up on some of the stuff that Kim picked up on back in from 2012. Mm-hmm. So here's a here's another clip here. Yeah, he was saying how awesome it was. He just had like acres and acres of, and all this stuff to just run around and play. All the woods and stuff. What did he do then? Did he have any experience with like a man, like a spirit? I feel like there was two men. There was. There was two men. Oh, okay. Was, okay. Yeah, he said there's like, there's two men that he said it's one. Okay, so so there's a few things to unpack there. <laughs> so you you picked up on the. Uh, Okay, so first of all, the clip starts out, I'm talking about the experience that Eric had there that he was relaying to Kim back in 2012, how he grew up. He was a kid. He was like 9, 10 years old. Mm-hmm. How he had all this all this property to run around in. He was having all this fun, you know, because him and his brother would just have all these acres and all these old buildings to run around and play in. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. And then you start talking about, you mentioned oh, two men. He saw two men. Which mm-hmm. is exactly what she picked up on. Mm-hmm. And it's exactly what he, the story that he told. Hmm. Okay. In this episode that you had not seen. No. So, nope. So you, this is right when you start picking up on that stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's also something else in that clip. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. And, and I had a conversation with Justin about this. And I, I don't understand why I did not hear this before. Because when I, there, I have two tracks from this day. Mm-hmm. Both of which I listened to, not with the intent of finding clips to make the episode, but I listened specifically to find EVPs yeah. in the recordings. Mm-hmm. Listened to all of them throughout. And I did come across one voice that I isolated and I showed it to you. Mm-hmm. That male voice, which we'll get to in a, in a little bit. Yeah. I did not hear this voice at all. And I didn't hear s- several more. And we'll get to these. Yeah. And I, I, I don't understand how I didn't hear any of these voices. Mm-hmm. When I specifically listened to these recordings for the s- specific reason to get EVPs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't until I went back again, listened to all the clips, to get segments for this episode that mm-hmm. I ran across and heard these voices. Yeah. So I don't know if they weren't there before. You don't know. Or if I somehow missed them all. I, I don't. Yeah. I can't really say for sure because I can't prove it one way or the other, but I, I don't, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know how I could have missed all these after the hundreds and hundreds of hours of audio I've listened to Yeah, to get EVPs. I, I don't, I don't know what I would have missed. That's why these. it's paranormal. Don't know what I would have missed these, but let's replay and then I will, we'll get to the point where this bizarre voice pops up mm-hmm. and I'll replay it a couple times and then. And then we'll, we'll mm-hmm. discuss and see. Because yeah. we, we sort of heard different things from this. Yeah, he was saying how awesome it was. He just had like acres and acres of, and all this stuff to just run around and play. All the woods and stuff. Yeah, there it is. All the woods and stuff. All the woods and stuff. <laughs> so you that's an EVP that you captured. Yeah. Electron, electronic voice phenomena that came in between our conversation. Yeah, it's just, that's what it sounds like to me. It's like a little kid just kind of like, then, 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 yeah, just kind of babbling or something. Yeah, super loud. It's loud. It's loud and clear. It's just as loud and clear as our voices mm-hmm. are. Yeah, but it's not making any sense. It's not us. So yeah, and I'm. You had picked up on what did you think it was saying? Something about you didn't get me or or. Come and get me, or something. You were you you were kind of hearing initially some specific things in there, but to me it just sounded like. Bleh, 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 bleh. But either way, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, neither one of us heard this at right, the time. Right. Neither one of us reacted to it, and I didn't even hear it listening through this audio, combing mm-hmm. through this like once already. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so, so I again, Play it again. I, you know I. All the woods and stuff. <laughs> Run around and play. All the woods and stuff. <laughs> All the woods and stuff. <laughs> you didn't let me. So, so why didn't you let me? Why yeah, didn't I don't, you let me? I don't know. Yeah. 
What's just strange about that is that it mm-hmm. sounds like a young boy's voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever it's saying, or if it's not saying anything. Yeah. Sound definitely sounds like a young boy. But it's at the exact same time I'm talking about. Right. That's it. This kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eric. Mm-hmm. Talking about his experiences as a child, running around as a kid and playing there. And then this weird hmm. young boy's voice just pops in. Right, so maybe there was a place where you weren't supposed to go in or a place that was locked and and you weren't able to get into or you weren't supposed to get in as a child when you were running around playing. Uh, maybe one of the buildings were you know was locked for a reason that kids weren't supposed to go in. Yeah, I'm sure that... Because his experience was, you know, his his mm-hmm. father was was the caretaker of the property, and they lived, moved to yeah the property and lived on there, mm-hmm. right? And so they were the caretakers of the property, so they were allowed to run around somewhat. But I'm sure there were places that they weren't allowed to go, yeah, because this is like a really important historical right. place. Could, could have been dangerous. It could have been you know, just yeah. They have important things in there that they didn't want kids to play in. Wasn't you know? So yeah, it could have been anything. So yeah, interesting. <laughs> so that's the first little weird thing that popped up that um that we weren't expecting and that i didn't even hear again like i said right going yeah. through listening for avps for that somehow that slipped by me i don't know how mm-hmm. so but you were also you begin to pick up on these uh these two men and you start you start like zeroing in on the same stuff that kim was actually zeroing in on she mm-hmm. was there back in 2012 yeah pretty interesting right (laughs) (laughs) so we can you know so we're just walking around we're just checking out the buildings and looking in the windows and just checking things out and uh you actually a little bit later on you pick up on a little bit more information yeah we we went for a walk and then yeah so here's another clip and this is whoops you're picking up on see i got that's why i need to get that new cord for the Mm -hmm. yeah podcast you pick up on a little bit more information so then we'll just... And where were we when you picked that, like, set the scene? I don't remember exactly where oh, in the okay. village you were, but it, after we play it, we'll, we'll discuss. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of... My memory serves me right. He walked into the middle of something. Somebody, well, okay, uh, so my head hurt. It was hurting also. So there's a, some type of altercation that he witnessed, or and that's why they both said I was misunderstood. Like something happened. I, I don't know if they blamed somebody and they didn't really do it, or, or they weren't they didn't know who did it. But there's something happened, and it almost looks like one. You know, I don't want to say they're not Amish looking, but that hat. One had a hat, and then one. It looks like 1800s, if it so... it plays out more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. So they did where? I don't know. It's over... Something that was over there. I don't know if that's where they... I mean, this is a whole big thing. So back in the time, it, could, it was older land. Do that, Brent? Oh, what's that? Is that the last of it right here? Yeah, so... Mean? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so... No, yeah. To feel free to chime in whenever. Yo, so you, you may have heard that little voice. That, that breathy breath. voice mm, at the end there. That wasn't me or you. was not either of us. Mm. And that's something that pops up multiple times during the day here. But this is when we were over. Remember we found we were over in the grass over by that gigantic tree that we were so impressed with. And yeah. we were looking at that. Mm-hmm. That's where we were over there. And we were assessing mm. how much more the village was left. And then yeah. and you were commenting that like, oh, something. You were getting drawn back over towards the other buildings that we the were The one at. in the back. Yeah. Okay. Which is. Okay. Which is significant because that's exactly where his event took place, which mm-hmm. oh, well. I actually didn't even know. I had seen the episode, yeah, you I had didn't. not. No, no. I remember him. I remember him walking up to this window and looking in and walking into this little argument, like we just started to address there in that clip. You started picking up on that. There's something. There was a conflict that was mm-hmm. going on. It wasn't necessarily their fault. Yeah. There was. You saw one of them with a hat. One of them with a vest. Yeah, yeah. He, they, he walked into the middle of an argument, which you heard me say. State there. But I didn't remember which building it was, even when I was there and we were walking around. Mm. Well, it turns out you were getting drawn back to that building, yeah. even though neither of us realized that yeah. that's what building it was. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's referred to as the big house on in the village. Okay. And it's the, it's the house that has that weird little stuff 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like and a, then that was the house they lived in, you said, right? Or they, Well, no, they lived in one of those buildings oh, in the center okay. of the village. They okay. lived upstairs above like the shops, one of those shops. Gotcha. But so he walks over to this building, the big house, quote unquote. Mm, yeah. Looks in the window mm-hmm. and there's this discussion taking place between these two spirits, which this kid didn't even realize they were, he saw them as real people. He thought he was mm-hmm. going to get in trouble. Oh my God, who's this? And they both turned and looked at him and he thought, oh my God, he just got freaked out and ran. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you start picking up on this. And what's interesting is like you're drawing in on this mm-hmm. argument with these two men. You're starting to see them. You started, like they, you said, they start communicating with you. Yeah. And lo and behold, we catch a male voice right at the end of this clip. So I'll just play that again a couple more times. So they did where? I don't know. It's over something that was over there. I don't know if that's where they... I mean, this is a whole big thing. So back in the time, it was older. It's, it's, yeah, it's like they're saying... So they did where? I don't know. It's over that's something that was over there. I don't know if that's where they... I mean, this is a whole big thing. So back in the time, it, it was older... That's where they, I mean, this well, because is a whole I asked, thing. so back in the time, it was older. I'm land. asking right there is if, if this is where it was, I'm not sure. Back in the time, so he's like, no, almost he's here, no, almost like he's leading us to where the next place we were going, yes. And this is right where, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to us at the time, this episode is beginning to take a turn in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Because that wasn't on the, the, the TV show, <laughs> no, it was not on the TV show. Oh my god. Had nothing to do I, with Eric Mabius, nothing crazy. to do with Kim, Russo. with Kim Russo. Which I love, by the way. She's amazing. She's legit, for sure. Yeah. Um, but this, but she was zeroed in on Eric and his experience, and she drew in on that stuff. Which right, because she, she, she went out there with him to, to see what he right. dealt with and what he went through. But we were, we were, stuff that happened was more into the whole history of the land after that. Yeah, much, much after that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so there again, there's that voice that pops up that seems to be engaging you in the conversation that you're talking about. And you're like, no, 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 I yeah. think it's over there. Yeah. And you at the moment are referring to this there. encounter that right. took place that was relayed by Kim in 2012. Yeah. Referring to Eric's experience mm-hmm. with these two men from the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Which we still think we're dealing with, but we're actually not. Yeah. Because, and this voice pops through to kind of prove it because he comes in and just says, no. So, and that's how Spear does it. If, if, okay, so we were there for trying one experience, but we were also there for the history of the whole place, no matter what time period or time era it, it happened. And that, and that's kind of what happens here. So they were like, okay, no. So that voice or that, um, EVP was saying like, like, okay, Obvi- you'll you'll see. Obviously, they wanted us to find out something more about that place. Correct. <laughs> yeah, and this is and this is what I was referring to earlier at the top of the show when I said, you know, this is this is what happens with the paranormal. You can have one motivation at the outs- at the outset, and you start mm-hmm. getting into it, and then you just start getting led down different roads, and you never know. And I mean, uh, Hellier is a perfect example of that. You never know when you start where the hell you're going to end yeah. up at the end of it. You know, I mean, you're just going to follow the clues and wherever it takes you, that's where you're going to go. <laughs> and you never know where the hell you're going to end up. So, so this will make sense uh, when we kind of tie all this together. But there is there is a voice that comes through that is trying to lead us in another direction here. And it, it does. And it does lead us in another direction. Without us knowing it. <laughs> which we had not yet realized. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until we concluded the investigation that day it kind of became pretty clear what was going on and then Mm -hmm. when i went back and i listened to the audio now multiple times and caught these different evps it kind of fed into that same narrative uh so uh, without further ado we'll get to the next clip which gives more clues as to exactly where (laughs) where we're being led so we'll we'll play and then uh and then we'll discuss here and i think after this We'll take a break and then we'll come back and then tie it all together. Definitely financial situations involved with those two men. I believe you're right about that.
That's us walking, by the way. But I feel like it wasn't one of the shops. I feel like it was a living quarters. Yeah. Like, like more like the. Yeah, it was. Okay, so again, mm. you're you keyed into another huge portion of what was going on for this Eric gentleman, which was that there were these all these financial issues going on with the village and stuff. It was part of the reason why these two men uh, apparently were arguing. And this is like at this time of the walkthrough, this part of the case, this is what we're, we still think we're keying into. Now, you know, and I want to draw your attention back to that voice that says no. <laughs> so at the, still at this point, we're walking through and we think we're continuing down following clues. And Beth is still picking up on all of these clues about the two gentlemen the, the, of the Allaire family and these financial issues. Uh, there was a death in the family. There's all these troubles they had with the running of the village and all that stuff like that. She was picking up on that also. But we're going to take a break right now. And then we're going to, after we come back from the break, we're going we're gonna to address where we turn a corner in this case. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll, crazy, uh, we'll, take crazy. A, we'll take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Crazy, crazy. And welcome back. Hello. So, uh, thank you for sticking in with us. Uh, like I said, before the break, we were just addressing how um, Beth was continuing to zero in on these two men, right? And this, you know, like the clip before last, this voice comes in kind of in dismissive ways, you know, saying no. Uh, seemingly in reference to what you're picking up on, right? Yeah. And then on the in the last clip, you were picking up on even more things that took place there, which is like these financial issues and all that kind of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, fast forward a few minutes, and then we get to the next clip, which really starts to get to the point where we... Oh, was that the picnic bench or when we... Well, it started when we went for the. I got the name. Oh, when we went for the walk, when we were starting down that path by the mill sign. It, right. This mm. this is right before we went for the walk on the trail. When we ended up back around, we did that loop at we the ended picnic up, bench. We ended up no. This is this is oh, I'm back. Sorry. We ended up back at the mill pond. So we're standing again by the pond where you're picking oh, up yeah, this yeah, mill. Yeah. You picked okay. up the mill mm-hmm. thing, and you're thinking, no, mill. You're right. Whatever. You're right. So we're back at the pond again when you pick up on on this next piece of information. So the na- William and there was a William and, and George, but I don't know what back there is getting back. Is this area here something all went down? Has it to do with the mill? <laughs> okay, so oh my God, I yeah, yeah. So so you're so you pick up on these two male first names, William and George. Right? So I thought, yeah. So I'm assuming because that's two first names. So that's what I thought. There was two, right? So we're, mm. and you're you were just got done addressing these two men that you've been seeing. So you assume like just like I did. Oh, that might be that's these two guys' names. It's William and George. And we were having a discussion. It's not. Right, it, it was like, it, I and kind of knew that it, I was like, okay, I, maybe this is something different. But yeah, you were definitely picking up on something intense that happened in that spot. Yeah, and you don't hear it in this clip, but we were discussing, like, you asked me what the guy's name was that owned this village. I know his last name was Alaire, obviously, but mm-hmm. we're trying to think of like the first names. I'm like, oh, was that his first names? I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're working through it. And mm-hmm. you get these this, these two names, William and George. Now, we, we initially, like I said, assumed that it was just these two men that you were talking about. But just like many, many times in the paranormal, you get taken for a ride and you have no clue where you're going to end up. Right. And and maybe from that time period, 18, was it from 1800, 1900? 1800. Yeah, it was 18, okay. like, you know, roughly mid-1800s. Okay. Mm-hmm. And now it's 2020. And it's 2020, but right. it's important mm-hmm. to think about, and we had a long discussion about this that day, literally anything that happened 
before now right. is history. And history, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean that you go to a um, historical um, dwelling that, okay, it's from, okay, so you're going, most of the places are from 18, 17, 18, 1900s, but it has to do with when you're going onto a property as a psychic medium, you uh, sometimes you pick up on everything at, on every time period and not just that time period because it's something even though it's way back even 1950s 60s 70s 80s whatever it's still history of that dwelling and that land and that and and where you're at at the time so yeah yeah and also you're you have the potential to pick up on something connected to the people that you're there with yeah. Which is why I think Kim is so successful. What she does is because she specifically goes to a location mm-hmm. with that person who had right. the experience mm-hmm. and taking them back to the same spot, you know, and is and is like reading not only the property, but is reading them, reading what took place between them. Why is it important? Why right. were they shown this? Is it was it you know, right. significant to them for some reason? But you know. most of the time it is because it has she's for the TV show and but she's the real deal. But she's going with that person, so she is she's dealing with his history at that time and and what happened and why it happened. Because then at the end of their shows, it always reveals something that has to do with that person's life. So that's why she t- specifically taps into that and that person that that celebrity. Yeah. So we went a little past that. So we went. Real deep in the weeds, and, and we went for a walk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and so we left the village, went into a little walk around the trails, which is all in the village. It's around the village. It's, it's the same property. It, it is. Yeah, it's about. It's just over three thousand square. Yeah, so it's on the property. Acres of of property, and it's camping sites, trails. It's you know, it's huge. All kinds. Of, it's it's massive. Excuse me. And um, so we take a walk around the trails, and then we grab some snacks from the car and then we go back to like they have this really gorgeous picnic area in a shaded area yeah with trees. so we're sitting there mm-hmm. so we take a break and beth decides to get out her phone and just google allier state park and what what did you search for specifically well it, because we're paranormal investigators and we do historical sites and private homes but mostly historical sites we we unless it's something we learned in high school or or whatever we don't like to know the history of that site or where we're going so that when i tap into it then 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 at the end i reveal what i feel see and hear so yeah so that's why and so what so yeah. did, did when you did the this Google search because I'm going to well, pull- well right right so when we, you just heard the EVP that I got those names I thought it was two separate names and then we walk through the woods around the, which is part of it and you can camp there and stay there and all that then we ended up we like we grabbed snacks in the parking lot out of the car and we went to the snacking area which was right next to where I got these names and then. I said, so So we were done. I'm like, okay, we're done for the day. We're just relaxing, getting a drink of water, and we're going to eat a sandwich. So then I start Googling, you know, the site, you know, and where we were at to see if anything I was feeling or saying matches to anything. So that's when, that's why I did that. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I just um, those two names, I if they, I, I, so I was like, so I thought it was two different people, and I, to see if it, is any history to the Alaire estate to where we were at. That's all I do to say, oh, well, does any of this match? You know, just to check and then this. Yeah, and so so she pulls out her phone and starts Googling stuff. and um, I was like, holy shit. And basically just <laughs> gasps. And then I'm just I, like, oh, my God, I realized I wasn't recording. And so I grab my recorder and I just start recording. And this is... Um, this will be the final long clip I'm going to play, but we have some EVPs to get to also after this. So here's here's the clip that took place while we were taking a break in the picnic area. Earlier, Beth picked up on William. The name's William and George, and she just found an article. Re- read, read that, what that says. Accused killer, William George, DOS, 20, um... Of Wall Township after an arraignment yesterday on a charge of murdering Donna DeRyer in Alaire State Park on August 3rd. He waits grand jury. But what is the date? Has to be 
August 25th. It's coming August 25th, 1966. 66. Okay, I was wondering because it looked old. So, yeah. So, you discover this thing on your phone. I hear you gasp. I start recording, and that's that's what we captured. And so, that's what we were talking about before when we said, you know, you never know when you start investigating somewhere. What exactly you're going to pick up on? You can't ever assume that it's going to be, you know, something from the 1800s or oh, was someone in a period dress right. or this or that. You were picking up on that also, but <laughs> here, lo and behold, you're picking up on. So it's all history, basically. No, a murder. Now, was this voice yeah. to pop up? Was that the voice of this murderer? And and. I mean, it's just crazy just to think, okay, you know, the two names that I, I got, the William George, and we're thinking, okay, so th these may be the two people, the spirits that we we're yeah. tapping into because of the history in that time period. Um, but then as I'm sitting there, after we went for this long walk, you know, through the trails of the property, and we decided to take a little break, and I when I Googled it, um, which I do after, like I say, in most places that we go to, um, historical sites that we don't know the history because we prefer not to know till the end. And then, lo and behold, it was really crazy what we found. Yeah, I mean, who would who would think that if you pick up two first names that it would be from the same person? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, in reference to a. a brutal murder that took place there yeah in the 60s right so this is actually a, a first and william george is a first and last name of a murder that took place in 1966 um so yeah so that's was pretty profound and really emotional so gonna play this clip right yeah and so this is where i've discovered <laughs> oh my gosh yeah and mm. so so then, you know, Beth is sitting there and looking up some more stuff. And, and you know, I, I want to bring your memory back to the first portion of the show where we approached this pond and she got this mill name. And she kept seeing mill, mill, right? Mm -hmm. um, the name well, had to do with mill. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so now this, the two names of this murderer pops up. She was getting... You know, was feeling very, very intense energy in this one spot, like something very, very bad happened in this one spot we were standing in. And then we loop back around. She gets these two names. Lo and behold, belongs to this person who, you know, was a a, a piece of shit, a criminal, a, a rapist, and a murderer. <clears throat> and uh, picks up on his names at the same spot that we looped all the way around, all these thousands of acres, and she picks it up on the same exact spot we were standing on both times. And then she Googles this report, finds that this William and George is referring to this person who committed this murder. Yeah, I, I Googled the Alaire estate, and this is what <coughs> pops up. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, man. And so now she reads on, and this other short clip is going to be just like a little, another little tidbit here. Um, keep in mind the, the mill name she was talking about earlier. All right. So you know what's even weirder? Remember? Now, I don't know if it's too a coincidence, but... I was getting mill, mill, something with the mill. Emerging from Monmouth County Courthouse elevator before arrangement on murder charges, William George Dows yanks his khaki work shirt to cover his face from the cameraman. At left is Wall Township Detective William Miller. I didn't even I didn't even realize that till you just said this. <laughs> I didn't realize that was his last name. I didn't realize that till you till I'm doing the show with you. Yeah. So which is pretty crazy because I did not know that. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Sorry about the cursing. Yeah, and so you you picked up on two of the three names of the murderer, and you picked up on the name of the individual that arrested the, the murderer. So <laughs> like we said before, wow. if, when you when you get interested and involved in the paranormal don't think for a second you have any idea what you're getting yourself into because you you really have no idea where you're going to end up when you start any investigation oh and one other thing isn't 
the anniversary of the woman that he murdered is coming up? It was early August. So, yeah, so it's coming up. 66, yeah. And uh, doing this work that I do, some things are more important than others, and for some reason, Spirit needed me to know about this instead of... I mean, they. I we know some of the history, or they let me know some of the history about what happened at that time period, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds. But for some reason, it was more important for them for me to know about this. So because of the anniversary, and 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 basically, if I feel like it's to let us, you know, don't forget about the victim and what happened to her, and her name was Donna, and uh, yeah, so. Um, pretty um profound yeah yeah quite and that's um that's one of the things one of our motivations that we go into a place especially when something like this comes up is you know we we take it very seriously and we and we feel it come upon ourselves to give whatever spirit energy or whatever is there the opportunity to actually pass forward or pass along any messages or to say anything they need to be said or something they need to be known. Because like she said, sometimes it's just a, it's just a, when there's activity in a location, sometimes it's just, it's just something that wants to be acknowledged and known and remembered and not forgotten. Um, and this seems to be one of those, one of those, um, occasions. And so that's, so that's where the journey began and ended for that, for that day trip. Um, and that's the major clips that I wanted to play in reference to that journey going from the Allaire, Eric Mavius, you know, uh, Kim Russo journey to, to this murder case that just popped up. Um, but in the process of that, there are also, also some other strange voices that popped up. And this male voice comes up two different times, and one of which you heard already, but I have that isolated and we'll, we'll play that. And we'll play the other time that that voice popped up as well and then we'll discuss i don't know it's over something that was over there i don't know if that's where they i mean this is a whole big thing so back in the time it it was older land yeah do you hear that yeah it's like yeah yeah it's like it it was like a loud whisper yeah i mean it's a whisper but it's very very clear yeah and there's no people around us so that's not it's not something that could you know mm-hmm. it's not a mistaken voice. Um, it's pretty clear in the recordings when there's other people around because you can hear kids playing, people talking and laughing yeah. and stuff. There were other voices when we were sitting in the picnic area. You could hear voices mm-hmm. clearly in the background because there's that other group of people. Yeah, over there having that big party. Right. So th- that's kind of stuff, and that's why I tend to pour over this audio as soon as possible after these events take place because that's still fresh in my head and I remember. Oh yeah, that's the. That was those people over there. They were having a party. That what? That's nothing. Right. So, so you know, I'll just play this a couple more times so you can hear those. So you can hear that voice. I don't know. It's over something that was over there. I don't know if that's where they. I mean, this is a whole big thing. So back in the time, it it was older. Whole big thing. So back in the time, it it was older. Big thing. So back in the time, it it was older land. Yeah. You hear? Yeah. Kind of confirming what we were talking about. Yeah. All the woods and stuff. I do kind of hear that. Yeah, they did not let me. So what they did not let? I, it's it's bizarre, and that's not me or Mike and this corner, no. and because uh, it actually like talks a little bit over us a little bit. Let's see. So I play it again. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. All the woods and stuff. Did you have any experiences with like a? I almost wait. Yeah, you hear like what? Yeah, so I, it's bizarre. Like, is that you saying it? what? No, play it again. It wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. I say what because I hear. I hear something. So that's, I possibly hear that, you know, because I hear something and it wasn't you. <laughs> I, I. It's just bizarre. It's like nah, 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 like a little kid like chiming in to what we were saying, like. They wouldn't let us. Out of I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't, hundred yeah. percent. But that is a, a, a disembodied voice, and it's not ours. So it was, it was pretty fascinating. 
I'm not sure what they're. I'm not sure if anybody else can. If you if you can if you hear something, let us know and just uh, send it to the bunker and we'll take it, listen to it, but or what you think it says, but. We're yeah, not sure. Yeah, absolutely. If you have any comments or, or yes, you know, if you please think you, think you know what's being said here or have any input on on you know the context or whatever, you know, like, feel free. Yeah. To you know just Maybe. email. Yeah. Mail to the bunker at Gmail. They didn't let, let us or something. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm listening. Speculating, for that. but it is considered. Yeah. I mean, it is an EVP, and and it's just we're not sure what it's saying. But we're talking, I think Mike was talking about the child, the caretaker's child that lived there that was about eight or nine, the same age as when Mike used to, his sister used to take him there. So it could be a child just saying that because he used to walk around with his brother. So um, maybe they're playing and they're saying they would not let us in there. They wouldn't, let, they would not let us in there. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but it's definitely a disembodied voice from a spirit. So it could be like when they, they were playing around, running around the area, which... As a child, until he got frightened, it was probably a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, you know, this happened, so. It did sound like he really enjoyed yeah. being there and had yeah. lots of fun until mm -hmm. this dramatic event happened, and then, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that's why Kim Russo, uh, I believe, went there. She was trying to get to the bottom of, of this, like she does for her show, and most of the time, the reason that these celebrities go through this experience is it has to do with what's going on in their own life, so, like I said, I think Kim Russo is pretty amazing, but... Anyway, it was just an interesting all, all the way around experience. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was cool to do that little experiment. And see yeah. you pick up on the, a lot of the things that she picked up on. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we just take yeah. a left turn. To, and right, to go. get the first and last name of a murder case, which I blew my mind because I've never been to this place, you know, before. So that was pretty crazy. But, this is, but the forensic mediumship stuff is kind of something we've been kind of pulled into before. Yeah, and so maybe have a little bit of experience with, and mm -hmm. it's something you've had. You just recently mm -hmm. had a class on that. Yes. So it's you know it could be this certain thing like this is just a certain frequency that you're now beginning to tap into, and it's this is something that may start yeah. to happen now. Right. Um, which is very interesting. But um, but just here's another EVP of. There's a couple sounds here that are strange that don't belong, uh, and it's when we approach the church which is kind of out in the middle of the village, surrounded by fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, there were no people around us. There were no other people. There was no kids around us. Um, right. I was not able to... The church was locked, so we weren't able to open the door. And so I... I to me, I feel like... I don't know. Well, I'll just play the clip, and then, and then we'll discuss. But we'll talk about what I hear. Church. This is a church. Wow. Cool. It's still in use, I think. Okay. It's like ah. <laughs> so, in the beginning of the clip, I think I, I can't decide whether I I hear a creaking door or if I hear a baby. Hmm. But then later in the clip, I definitely hear. A baby crying or making some kind of sound. Yeah. But the, like I said, there was no people around us. There were no babies around us. There was none of that anywhere near us. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll play it again. Right there. Mm. Yay. See, I can't decide if that's a creaking door or if that sounds like a kind of a kind of like a baby. To be honest with you, that now that I'm here, it sounds like a woman. Play it again. To me, that sounds like a woman. Okay. And then play the next one. Church. This is a church. Wow. The church. Wow. This is a church. To me, I, you know, I, I think I, it sounds like a, an African American woman. So I, so I don't know. But anyway, it, it's definitely um, female. I feel like, well, like I don't know. Just that's what it, sensing it feels like to me. So in that time period, you know, remember in the beginning, I remember saying that I did um, see that African American woman that we you know she was carrying a basket. Um, so I wonder if, you know, she had something to do with the church. 
Hmm. Maybe. And it's interesting too how you you listen to, you know, different EVPs, mostly Class B, and you know, ten different people can listen to it mm-hmm. and literally hear like something completely different. And it's just mm-hmm. I don't know. It's because of the, the odd frequencies that's coming through in. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a theory that men and women hear frequencies differently because yeah. their voices themselves are in different octaves. So I, I don't know. But w- to me, when I first heard that, it sounded like a door creaking the first that first noise, and yeah. then it sounded like a baby cooing or like. But we'll, sometimes kind of whimpering. We go through that. You'll hear something different in that than what I hear, and that's okay. Yeah. But you definitely hear something, and it definitely feels like oh, I, I, something I, there that neither of us heard. Yeah. When we were there. To me, it sounds like a baby. It's definitely some I, kind of voice of yeah. it's a, a whimpering or a crying. Yeah, or yeah like, ah, yeah. Something mm-hmm. like that. And, I mean, none of us heard it. We didn't react to it. Mm-mm. And, again, even the first time I listened through the audio, I didn't hear that. Hmm. There's yeah. no way I would have missed all of these voices. <laughs> yeah. That's... Specifically listening to audio for EVPs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very interesting. But yeah, so that's... Um... So that was the the uh, our day trip at L. Air State Park, and uh, I just what I liked about how just about the whole entire trip was it was a satisfying trip because it's a cool visit to a cool location. Yeah, tons of old historical buildings around an old village. It's just it's as it was a hundred two hundred years ago, so it's cool, right? Yeah, these beautiful grounds, massive trees everywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's just pleasant to visit it, and then you know, and then. We go there, and you're picking up on all these things mm-hmm. that Kim also picked up on at, mm-hmm. in the same location. And so that was cool. And then I listened to the audio, decided to make an episode out of it. And then lo and behold, boom, 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 all these voices start popping up. And, you know, right in the middle of it, we take this sharp left turn and go from, oh, these, you know, this classic thing that happened in the 1800s. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, 1966 murder case. Yeah. You know. Right, and it's there's there's no way in a million years we could have predicted that's where we're going to end up at the yeah, end. Yeah, that, that was even before I was born, and you're you were born. So to get you yeah. know the first and last name, which I thought were two different names, so right, which is it's just so indicative of how the paranormal works because we were just you were just keying in on these two individuals from the 1800s, and then all of a sudden you get two first names. So obviously most people would be like, oh yeah, well that that must be these two people you're picking up on. Right. Yeah, no. Lo and behold, it was a murder <laughs> from, and that's a first and last name, William George. So that that was pretty wow we were just like oh my god we were floored but that's how the paranormal works and and if that's what they want you to know and get across to you then that's what they'll do exactly and you you had commented earlier i think about how rare it is to even get any names let alone two names and the anniversary is coming up of this i you know i don't want to say her last name because of the situation you know out of respect but um the anniversary of of when this happened is coming up so Maybe that's why, you know, it's like, okay, remember me. I was a, you know, a person. I, you know, did this. I had a family. So maybe that was the reason why they presented themselves to me, the spirit wise. Um, and I forget, did that person get the death penalty or? I'm pretty sure. I think so. He did or died in prison uh, because the, he, he had committed other crimes as well. Yeah, that we didn't know. Yeah, um, you know, you, just a little bit. You looked into it. You know, he's he had other other issues with the law. So, so yeah. Sometimes you know, it's it's a matter of of a location or a person or um, energy of something or someone really just wants to be recognized and doesn't want to be forgotten. You know, it could be just as simple as that. But it's 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 just interesting how you know when you get into investigating really anything i mean you can even getting into investigating historical facts you start off maybe with a certain set of you know goals in mind you never really know where you're going to end up and it's it's not always going to take you to a place you expect uh so moral of the story is keep an open mind open eyes and ears and uh right you never know what you're what you're going to find but uh yeah i want to thank everyone for joining us for this episode of the bunker yeah. Uh, if if uh, you live in the area, I highly suggest you go visit Al Air State Park. It's pretty fantastic. Um, you know, minus this um, terrible thing that happened in the past. It's um, it's a wonderful location. They have lots of events, and um, yeah, it's a cool place to visit. So, 
And it seems to be active, so. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the land is beautiful, so go take a road trip and go on the trails. You can bring, you know, a cooler or a picnic basket and, uh, yeah, enjoy part of history. Yeah, there's loads and loads. I think there's 10 different trails. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty beautiful Campus place sites. overall. Yeah, 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 pretty awesome. Yeah, you can camp there, too. So Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you. And we will see you very soon back here in the bunker. <laughs> see you when we see you. <laughs> soon. Good night. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode in the bunker. If you enjoy this podcast, there are a few things that you can do to help support the show. If you're on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, you can leave us a five-star rating and review, and this will help others to find the bunker and the safety that it provides. And the podcast is free to listen, but it isn't free to create. So I urge you that if you enjoy the podcast, go to our homepage and click that support tab and just help support the show. This will allow us to provide much more content moving forward. You can also just share our page on social media. The Bunker is located on Twitter at InTheBunkerCast. Again, that is in the bunker cast on Twitter. Also, you can send us a direct email at mail to the bunker at gmail.com. That's mail to the bunker at gmail.com. If you're experiencing some strange activity or just want to tell your story, feel free to shoot us a message either on Twitter or on Gmail. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time in the bunker.